In the last video you watched, you learned about critical points. And specifically, critical points are where the derivative of a function, so f prime of x, the derivative of the function f, is equal to 0, or where the derivative of a function is undefined. Let's consider this in the context of the function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 12x. Let's first take a look at the graph of this function. This is x cubed minus 12x. And if you're thinking about the critical points, it's where is the derivative equal to 0 or undefined. So as you recall from last semester, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So where could you draw a tangent line that just touches the graph with a slope of 0? If you drew a tangent line here, it would have a positive slope. If you drew it here, it'd still have a positive slope, but less positive. And up here, if you drew a tangent line, it would have a slope of 0. Also down here, if you drew a tangent line, it would also have a slope of 0. So looking at this graph, it looks like this probably has two critical points, here and here, because at these two points, the slope of the tangent line would be 0. If you have the graph in front of you, you can just look at it and tell what the critical points are. But if you don't have the graph in front of you, you need to take the derivative yourself, which we'll do here, f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 12. And then you'll set the derivative equal to 0. Because you're trying to find where is the derivative of this function equal to 0. So now we'll just solve this function 3x squared minus 12 equals 0. Start by factoring out a 3 probably. x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. This function looks like we can factor it to x plus 2, x minus 2, equals 0. Then we'll solve these individual factors. We'll have x plus 2 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. We'll get x equals negative 2, and x equals 2. We've found the critical numbers at this point. So these are not the critical points. These are the critical numbers. The critical points are a point, which requires an x and a y coordinate. But if we want to find the critical points, we can plug in these x coordinates and see what the function's equal to at that value. So we'll just plug in 2 and negative 2 to find the critical points. And we're going to plug these into the original function, not the derivative. Remember, if we plug these values into the derivative, we will find the slope of the function at that point. And we already know the slope of the function is 0 at 2 and negative 2. So we got to plug these into the original function to see where the function is at that place. So we'll do 2 cubed minus 12 times 2 and negative 2 cubed minus 12 times negative 2. And these should give us our critical points, which are negative 16 and positive 16. These are our critical points. Let's try one more function. Let's think about f of x is equal to sine of x. And we want to find the critical points for this function. So the first thing we'd like to do is to look at a graph of the function of sine of x. When we look at this function of sine of x, it looks like there's going to be a bunch of critical points because there's a lot of places where the tangent line would have a slope of 0, like here, 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 here and here, and then so on and so forth. What we want to do is find out where that occurs. Where does the tangent line have a slope of 0? In order to find the critical points for the function f of x equals sine x, we first need the derivative. That's f prime of x, and the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x. 
where does the derivative, or where does cosine x, equal 0? So we're going to use the unit circle for this, and you probably remember that cosine's talking about the x-coordinate of the unit circle, and sine's talking about the y-coordinate. So where is the x-coordinate, or cosine of x, equal to 0? And that occurs here and down here. So these are critical values for the graph f of x equals sine x. The critical values are at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2. And also, just thinking about the graph of sine x, you know that this graph will continue to curve forever and ever. So there's more critical values than just these two. But we'll, we'll just talk about these two at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and so on. But we'll just worry about these two. So these are just the critical numbers. This is the x-coordinate where sine has a tangent line with a slope of 0, or where its derivative is 0, at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And we can look back at our graph to kind of confirm this as well. Looking back at the graph, if you look at pi over 2, that's around here, you can see the slope of the tangent line 0, 3 pi over 2 will be here, slope of the tangent line 0, and so on. If we want to get the actual critical points, we just need to evaluate these in the original function. Remember, if we plug pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 into the derivative, it'll give us slope. But to find the critical points, we'll evaluate them in the original function sine of x. So what is sine of pi over 2? And what is sine of 3 pi over 2? Well, sine of pi over 2, you can go over here and see sine of pi over 2 is 1. And sine 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So our critical points then are at pi over 2, comma 1, and 3 pi over 2, comma, negative 1. 